3.10 says that we should bring all our tithes into the storehouse, that they may be meat in our house. And prove me now here with, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. May we be on our feet for tithes and offerings. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. their pockets in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And for those that were unable to give, we, pr we pray that you give them the grace <coughs> to give next time in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And as we continue with the service, may all go smoothly as planned in the name of Jesus. Yeah. May your spirit be filled in this place in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We thank you for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name I have prayed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is not our church. This is not church. Somebody praise the Lord. Do. Somebody praise the Lord. Do. Uh, you, keep, you keep saying like that. Somebody praise the Lord. Do. Hallelujah. We are happy that we are happy. Our first ever youth Sunday in the history. Of C.I.A. Samuel for the first time ever. I want you guys to shout the fire to Hallelujah! 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 You know, engine, yeah. but I will not be tempted in Jesus' name. <laughs> All right, so have your seat, please. Have your seat. God bless you. So, hello, church. Hi. Welcome to your Sunday. Hallelujah. Please round of applause for the youth. Oh. It's not easy. It's not easy. See, uh, this is the first time that we are climbing this podium, not 
other times, but for the first time ever as a youth in a service like this. It can only be God, and at the same time, it can only be because our fathers, the pastorates, were able to give us the opportunity for us to express ourselves. Hallelujah. So I want to say, to God be the glory Hallelujah. for great things he has done, for this historic moment he has given to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, let's appreciate our pastor. For a man like him to actually believe in youth like us, it tells a lot of what the church is about to hold. Hallelujah. Now, let's calculate and let's um, thank the pastorates. From Pastor Femi. Pastor Leia, you are hiding. I don't know why you are hiding. You're supposed to be here. Hallelujah. Pastor Femi, Pastor Leia. Our pastor says, God bless you, sir. Um, pastor Femi, God bless you. Pastor Charles, I know he's not here. I know you will be on my neck. But God bless you wherever he is. Hallelujah. Amen. So, in a few time, I want to have a little Bible recitation, which I'll be anchoring. And um, it's just to tell us the little of how we are able to know much about the word of God. Hallelujah. So, what is my name? My name is David. David the chairman is my name. And I have an ancestor whose name is also David too. Well, I do not collect his characteristics, please. Okay. Yeah. I'm a psalmist. I know how to play songs. So I'm not going to take the characteristics of a murderer or somebody who took someone's wife. But I'm going to take the characteristics of somebody who plays the psalms. Alright? And I'm going to tell you some little bit of the psalms which actually strike a chord in our hearts. Take for example, in Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the castle of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of his comfort. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. For he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth fruits in the season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he dwells shall prosper. Amen. But the ungodly and also by the travel the wind driveth away. Of course, you guys know Psalm 23. Can you say after me? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in great pastures. He let me beside the still waters, he restoreth my soul. He let me beside the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I want to divide the shadow of death, and I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, the rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepared the table before me, in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, and my cup on it over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Now, some of you were murmuring while I was saying Psalm 23. I'm, I'm not surprised. Some of you might not be reading the Bible, sure. But actually, sure. Let me give you a bit of what Psalm 23 Alright. Thank you, media, for this. And I can count on you guys. Alright. So, Psalm 27 actually says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came up to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Even though one host will encamp against me, in this will I be confident. How many of you know Psalm 91 here? How many of you know Psalm 91? He that will let in the sacred place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover us with His feathers and under His wings shall we trust. His truth shall be our shame and what? Buckler. For we shall not be afraid of what? Terror by night, nor the arrow that fly by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at our side, and ten thousand at the right hand side, but it shall not come near us. Only with the eyes shall that be able to see the reward of the wicked. Now let's go there. Thank you very much. Thank you for your Hallelujah. So, when it comes to the aspect of giving thanks unto God, now we have to say in the book of Psalm 100, um, make a joyfulness unto the Lord all your hands. Start the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with saving. And know you that the Lord is God, it's he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And they enter into his gift of thanksgiving and into his cause with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his message is everlasting, and they should endure it to all generations. For those of you who think that God has abandoned you and you don't have anywhere to go to, just know that Psalm 121 is always there for you. And what does it say? I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heaven and the earth. He will not suffer you to be moved. He that keepeth you will not slumber. Amen. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. Hallelujah. For those of you who are actually thinking, God, 
Will I be able to have the opportunity to have exam success? But well, the book of Psalm 119 verse 99 says, For I have more understanding than all my teachers, for his testimonies and my meditation. If you are afraid of death, don't worry, because Psalm 119 verse 17 covers you, which it says, I shall not die, but live and declare the words of the Lord in the land of the living, in the name of Jesus. And also finally, Psalm 150 says, Praise the Lord, praise God. In the sanctuary, praise him. In the firement of what? His power. Hallelujah. I believe that with these verses which we have just listened to, may the Lord give you the unction to be able to know that everything you're looking for is always sorted out in the word of God. And may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. years or 20 and even before I was born yes and so I have very few questions for us you are truly RCCG members please who would please tell me what RCCG means the full meaning of RCCG I know it's behind me but there are some of us that will say something that is not what it's supposed to be so who would please tell me what RCCG means anybody Anybody? It's RCCG, everyone. It's RCCG. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. The Redeemed Christian Church of God. Because some people that said, Redeem Christian Church of God, don't forget it. Redeemed. We are redeemed. And that is who we are. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, who would please tell us the founder and what year RCCG was found? Thank you. Who the founder is and what year RCCG was founded? I see some people with their phones. God bless you. <laughs> Anybody, please? Oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Hi, Thank you, ma'am. What year? <laughs> okay, that's not So, can anybody help us with the year? Even if it's just like between this and this, our. Sir? Sir? Grandpa is this. Okay, I'll help with this one. No one is there. Yes, Daddy has got to this. 1952. So, it was founded by Pa Akindayomi, like our mom behind said, Josiah's Akindayomi, and it was founded in the year 1952. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, Ma. Um, another very simple question. Who will tell us um, RCCG's number one vision and mission statement? It's behind me again, but let's close our eyes. Our vision, the number one on our list. Anybody? Thank you, ma'am. The first is to make heaven. Thank you. That is our number one vision as a church, to make heaven. And our dad always says to bring as many people as we can. So we should always remember that. And may the Lord help us to fulfill this mission in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
see it. Lord, you always good. Every single day we wake up. Lord, it's not about my power, it's not about my, it's just about your voice and it forever. Lord, we just want to say thank you. We don't look forward to that glorified Lord. We know we don't thank you enough, Lord. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for everything you've done in our lives. Thank you for our family. Thank you for food on our table. Thank you for clothing on our body. Thank you for shelter that we're able to sleep in. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you we're able to go to work, able to go to school. Thank you we're able to use our hands, able to use our legs, able to use our mouth. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, Lord today, we're bound today to speak about you and to bring people to your presence, Lord. Father, Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will move within us, Lord. I pray that you will open the heart of your children, Lord. You open their heart to be able to receive your word, Lord. I pray that every every strong-hearted person, Lord, you will soften their heart and you will make it tender for them to be able to receive the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, be thou exalted and glorified. May you anchor this service in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the living Jesus. Um, our title for today is Revived and Youthful. Um, our Bible text, we have two Bible texts. Ecclesiastes 12, 1 to 7, and 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10. We're going to start with Ecclesiastic 12, 1 to 7, because it talks about youthfulness. Could everyone open the Bible to Ecclesiastes? Ecclesiastic 12, 1 to 7. And it says, Remember now, thy creators, in the days of thy youth, while the evil day comes not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the minor cease because they are few, and those that look out of the window be darkened, and the door shall be shut in the streets, when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshoppers shall be a burden, and the desire shall fill, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets, or even the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitchers be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the God who gave it. We're all in the eyes of God, we're all youth. We might we might have different ages, so people might be 10, 12, 20, up to the age of 100. By the eyes of God, we're all youth. Lately in this world, as youth and teenagers, like from around the age of 30 or even upwards, we tend to get distracted by the things of wars, such as smoking, drinking, clubbing, and so much more. This is because those things look attractive and look appealing. Like, but as students of God, our eyes and our focus should be on God. As it says, remember now thy creators in the days of thy youth. I know as youth we've heard, you have only one life. Live it to the fullest. Live how you want to live. No one's going to tell you what to do. But I'm here to tell you that that statement is a lie from the pit of hell. In Ecclesiastes 11 verse 9, it says... Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But thou, but thou know that, that for all these things God shall bring thee into judgment. God himself says, Rejoice, be happy, enjoy your youthful life, but remember, you will give him account. This is not to install fear in you like, Oh, I could go to hell if I do this. This is to be an eye-opener that the way to heaven is narrow. While... The way to hell is broad and big and everyone goes into there. For example, when if the lights go off when it's dark, there's different way you can walk to. And that's how the way of the world, that's why the gate that leads to heaven is broad and really wide. But the gate, gate that leads to God is narrow. Like if the lights are on, you only see one door and you can only go through there. But when the, when the lights are turned off, you want to walk everywhere. I'm here to tell you that 
the walk with God might be hard. People might call you foolish. People might call you just enjoy your life. It's just one puff, just have one hit. It's not that deep. But I want to let you know it is that deep because everything you do affects the way, affects your journey with God. We're to leave for him. He has given us free will. Just because he has given us free will doesn't mean that we should go around smoking. I'm, we should go around smoking, clubbing, all this. Like You might be like, oh, it's just clubbing. What can you do? When you go to the club, you want to drink because your friends are telling you drink. But the Bible tells you, be of sober mind. For the enemy, for the enemy comes prone for who to devour. Be careful because when you're drunk, when you're not of sober mind, you tend to do things that you shouldn't do. You tend to have temptation which you fall into easily. And that's why God says, be of sober mind. You might be, oh, it's just, it's just, it's just dating. It's just dating. But God says, let him. Let him be in the middle of your relationship. You're dating a girl, you're like, oh, let's meet up now. Let's meet up like tomorrow by 8 a.m. or anything. And you guys go to each other's house. And now you, you keep questioning yourself, why do you keep on having sex? It's because you're going to a house and you're not inviting God into the house. And why are you even going to a house? When God is not in the center of the relationship, you tend to fall into temptation. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to tell you that... There's a better life for you, and that's with God. It might look hard. It might look, why should I follow God? What, what's the gain? There is a gain at the end because you gain to spend eternity with Him. Eternity with Him. <sighs> and if you're here and you're struggling with sins, God wants to let you know that sin does not define you. He does. The enemy might put in your mind, oh, you're doing this and you're doing that. You come to church and everyone's looking, oh, she's, she's the perfect person. But indoors, you're suffering with sins that no one knows. The enemy will try to put in your head that you're not good enough. But God wants to let you know that you are good enough for him. He has made you. And he has made you in his image. You're enough for him. He says he wants you to hand over his burden, addiction, ungodly behavior to him. He says, come to his altar. His arms are open wide. He wants you to be revived. That leads me to the second Bible text, which is taken from 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10. 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10. Someone please open the Bible to that. First Peter 2, 9-10, it says, But ye, O chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shield forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvellous light, which in time past were not a people, but were now the people of God, which has obtained mercy in it, and now have obtained mercy. Re revival means being restored to life. Jesus takes you out of darkness into light. He's the light in you which shines forth. That's why you know, that's why you have conviction on where to walk to and where not to walk to. Everyone was made by God and everyone was made in God's image. Satan or Lucifer manipulated Eve to eat the apple from the tree of life. Since then, the world has been polluted. In John 3.16, as everyone knows, we're given hope and salvation that Jesus has come to die for us and we can have eternal life in him. God says that sin, sin separates human from God. That is why Jesus came to die for you to have the covenant with God, for you to be able to speak to him one on one, for you to be able to have a relationship with him. Because back in the Old Testament, only the priest could speak to God. You couldn't have a one on one conversation with him. But God, Jesus voluntarily gave his life so you can have redemption with God. God. You might be like, oh, my sin is too much. I've sinned so many times. I keep repeating the same sin. But Jesus wants to let you know that if God accepted Paul, who persecuted Christians, he can accept you too. God says he will still accept you. His arms are open wide. He says if you can give your heart to him, he's able to give you peace, love, joy that surpasses the human understanding all he wants for you is for you to come to him god is a gentleman he knocks at your door waiting for you to open he's not going to barge in 
He's going to knock at the door. If you want to open it for him, you can open it for him. You might, you might, some people here might be suffering with addiction that no one's known, maybe be pornography, masturbation, maybe it'd be falling into the same relationship over and over again, maybe it'd be the spirit of lust, spirit of ungratefulness. We're all suffering with sins and we, you can't do it on your own. You can't do it on your own. That's why you need God. That's why he wants you to be revived. That's why it's called revival. He brings you back to life. He restores you to life. He wants you to come to him. Open up the door to him. You have the free will. He has given you the free will to choose him or not. And I'm here to tell you that I want you to choose him because I know he's able to do more than what anyone has ever told you. If he can save Paul, who persecuted humans, who killed so who persecuted Christians? Who killed Christians? He can save you too. Your sin is not too much for God to handle. You're chosen by God. It says, you are a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. He chose you. You were made for a reason. You were made for a purpose. You weren't just in the world. You had to be like a little design. No, you were made for a reason. And God wants you to know that you can only find that purpose and reason if you come to him. There's a void in your heart. There's a void in each and everyone's heart of us. You might try drinking, smoking, masturbation, fornication, clubbing, money, or any distraction to fill up that hole. They're, they're just temporary. The permanent help is from God. Open up the door and let him fill up the void that is in your heart. Cast all, in 1 Peter 5, 6-7, it says, Cast all your worries and anxiety on God. How about you cast all your burdens? How about you cast all your anxiety, all your problems, all your worries of the future? Cast it on God and come to him. He's waiting for you. Come hurry and accept him before it's too late. I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm saying that because I want you to really come to God. Because I know he can heal you. Because he has healed me. He's healed people around me. And I know he can heal each and every single one of us here. I want to let you know that your situation is not permanent. And God can restore you back to life. He's the light in the darkness. No one can stop the light of God. He's forever in you. Yeah, that's basically the whole song. Can we teach Tyler to pray up, please? Um, we're gonna sing a song first of all.